it's now my pleasure to introduce the next speaker. Uh, so we're now going to be hearing, guys, we're now going to be hearing from Rob Byrne, who is the Sales Development Manager for EMEA at Sales Loft, and he's going to be talking through why happiness is the misunderstood pillar to a successful SaaS career. Uh, described as a child of the SaaS industry, um, not... <laughs> I mean, grown up through the SaaS industry. There you go. Maybe you are a child of the SaaS industry. Um, <laughs> he started working as an outbound BDR 10 years ago and has worked his way through all of the primary sales roles at SaaS giants like Oracle, Salesforce, and Adobe before moving to set up the sales development functions for Yext and now Salesloft. Rob's passion for management comes from making sure that everybody finds their unique skill set and help land, helping them to land on the right career path for them. Let's give it up for Rob. Thanks a million, Elaine. Um, yeah, I like to do think I am a child of SAS. Um, <laughs> so, guys, happiness is an emotional state defined by the feelings of joy, satisfaction, content, and fulfillment. But if we look at this concept, it's different for everyone in this room. What makes us happy? If we think about SAS sales, I think it's really misunderstood what makes you happy in a career that is so fulfilling and enjoyment. For me, I'm consistently hearing from people saying, Rob, I'm only going to be hit happy if I hit my target. I'm only going to be happy if I see 100% in the CRM, I get my name called out in all hands, I get that juicy paycheck to buy that thing I definitely don't need, <laughs> but definitely want. <laughs> but that's not the reality. If we look at it, we need to create a sustainable way to stay happy in such a difficult market. For example, Forrester predicted in June this year that two thirds of SaaS people are gonna miss their number. And if you add in what's happened in the last couple of months about inflation or exchange rate being as low as it's ever been since the 1987 crash, I predict that's probably gonna be lower. So what do we do? Now you might look at me and go, Rob, I'm not gonna be one of these people, I'm gonna hit my target. But then you also come up with the aftermath of what I call the sales highs, which is when you do hit your target, which happens 90% of the time in the last month of the quarter or last day of the month, despite all our management begging, and I'm looking directly at my own team, you better not next week, <laughs> you get this 24 hour high of, yeah, I hit my target. Or on the other side of it, you get actually relief. Now I put this down to, I probably hold the record at Salesforce for the latest deal ever coming in at 11.58 p.m. on the 31st of January, and it was a multi-figure deal with six people. We all literally, no one could, like that seven hours of trying to get the contract over was pain. So what do we do? Do we just say that we're gonna be unhappy, or do we look for an answer? For me, turning into a manager, I really had to find this because I struggled so hard as an IC, carrying nearly every single target you could imagine. But how could I take my team and make them successful? How could I create this happiness culture that everyone wants to be there and work there and enjoy what they do? Now, I'm, I'm a very big believer in, I'm not have the right answer, but I'll always believe in someone who does. So after a lot of research, the person I went to was a guy called Mo Gatwith. He's the author of um, Solve for Happiness, but Mo is probably one of the most phenomenal people I've ever heard in sales. After, after setting up Microsoft in the Middle East, he then went on to be the chief business officer of Google X. Now, for those of you who don't know what Google X is, Google X's job is to come up with the most life-changing products that Google could ever come with. And they created the concept of the moonshot, which means any project this division did, it had the same odds of us landing someone on the moon in 1960. So these were re this is a man who is exceptionally smart. However, like all of us in the world, Mo went through these times of, I've hit that target, I have everything in the world. But then he also went through some really dark times where unfortunately, four small mistakes in an operation that has a 98% success rate result in the loss of his 21 year old son. So he went about going about how do I define happiness? How do I create cultures of happiness? And how can I take this message and share it in honor of my son? And for me, he came up with a framework that has three key elements that I'm gonna share with you guys tonight. First, Mo went down the street and he decided, I'm gonna create an equation. He created the happiness equation. Well done, Mo, marketing. Took you a long time, happiness equation. Woo. But happiness equation is defined by the events of your life minus your expectation of how that behaves. 
Now, this is kind of straightforward. We've all heard that phrase of glass half full and kind of went, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you look at his framework and go into far more detail, it focuses on the psychology behavior technique of cognitive thinking of ABC, which is used with, uh, with patients of depression to overcome the obstacles in their mind. Now, if we look at this in the sales, I'm not saying we're all depressed, we know we go through that pressure, but it's really about understanding this theory checking events that happen in our life and understanding that we have to accept the pressure that comes with this multi-billion dollar industry we all work in and see pressure as a challenge, not a threat. I, I say this when I've had so many times an AE, an SDR or BDR has come to me on the second day of a quarter and go, Robin's screwed. It's not happening. No, no way, I'm hitting my chance. Think bigger. Understand that in your mind you control your thoughts. It's not, emotions are not out of our control. You have to paint the bigger picture. Know your emotions, know your success, one by a time, and you'll get there. Now this is great when you're looking at that negative thought that's gonna absorb your mind about how you're gonna go through that. But Mo's version goes, well, let's not just wait to be happy. Let's inject happiness into our life to create sustainability so it's not an event at the end of a road. The way he did this, was coming up with what he called the happiness list. Again, Mo was on, on fire with marketing. He could sell anything. But with the way with the happiness list is genuinely things in your life, on a, on a Google shot, on an Evernote, whatever you want, 10 things that make you happy in life. Now, when I say you should do this, I don't mean you guys go off and say, a coffee makes me happy. I want you going off and going, that coffee in Soho by that barista that's really bougie, that costs me twice as much, right, gets my name wrong just for the Instagram shot. I want specifics <laughs> on that list, right? Because that's the only way you truly know the way to happiness. If you think about it and you're looking at it as a map theory, two years ago we all worked for companies that we all worked remotely. We never knew where the office was. We're like, okay, cool. We typed into Google, we followed intently, went on tube lines and things like that. It was difficult, but we had to pay attention. Nowadays, I would recommend that, I, I, I would suggest that everyone in this room close their eyes and get to their office without even trying, because they know the route. S sales confidence, health and safety, do not try. Just saying that out there. But it's the same with happiness. You have to know how to get there and you have to make it simple. What I would say then to all the managers in this room is, if, if your individuals are doing this, use it as an exercise for your team. Your job as a manager is to create a happiness culture, but you're not a mind reader. We always talk about this, how do you motivate our team? I've Googled so many times what spiffs I can do next through this. By doing this exercise, you, create, you identify patterns amongst your team to understand what's going well. Prime example, I saw on my team, half them love running. Don't know what's wrong with them, but half them do. And we're going to sign up to like a tough mother next year. But this exercise allowed me to understand that, allowed me to make a culture that people want to be there. Finally, I would say the third part of this framework is that you have to employ it. If you, it takes 18 days to create a habit. But if you, so you have to think about how you inject this into your life. As I said, there's no point just thinking I'm going to be happy. You have to put it in your day. You all have the right to be happy. You have the right to enjoy what you do as a living. So what I would say is that we're all being so disciplined with our calendars being like, uh, uh, day ones at this time, emails at this time, calls at this time. Put in time to go to that happiness, to bring yourself up. Now, obviously I'll back these things. Is, and another book that suggests this is by Sean Anker, The Happiness Advantage. He did an analysis on a thousand sellers in the top 500 fortunes. And he identified that people that could create this happiness state, sustain it during a sales cycle, had a 37% chance of being more successful. So if you think about it, each one of you is a professional. Just like an athlete, just like anything, what's your advantage? Why not make it happiness? Why not make what you do in an industry that offers you so many routes being happy versus dreading the idea of getting up on a Monday, on a Monday morning? So I'll leave you this, right? Three prospects of the framework. One, happiness equation. How events that happen in your life and how you behave them. Understand it. Two, create that list. Go to it, use it, leverage it, enjoy it. Three, put that habit in. Make sure you consistently do it because at the end of the day, what's the point? If we wanna be in a career that we truly embrace, that we truly get the most out of it, why not use happiness as our advantage? Thank you. Woo!